Mark Gibson Southwest Pottery welcomes you to Mount Taylor, New Mexico. This is a place where we come to gather most of our materials for making pottery. The clay is here in abundance, many types and many colors. The yucca grows under the trees, making the fibers of their leaves finer, perfect for paintbrushes. We found that looking for clay is not a matter of distance, but a matter of depth. Here on Mount Taylor, where all the layers are exposed, we may travel 10 miles and find five distinctly unique types of clay. We may locate geological layers that match surrounding areas. I find Hopi clay about two thirds of the way up the mountain. We find greenish gray deposits that look like Acoma Pueblo clay about a third of the way up the mountain. About halfway up the mountain, we find a clean brown clay. I'm sure there's a location within 20 miles or so that has the same clay. However, some clays are very secluded. They only exist in particular forms, in particular locations, nowhere else. This is some brown clay that we found along the way. This is uh, a sample that surprised us. We weren't even really expecting to find this where we went. This right here is a place where there's Lots of clay, but uh, mostly important is the firing source, the lignite coal. And this is one of our personal clay beds. This is where we gather clay ourselves. And you can tell people have been gathering clay here for many generations. This is the clay we gather today. Some of this is for West from Airstream. Down below is Acoma Sky City, you can see in the distant bluffs. Casa Metal Ruin is an excellent example of a Chacoan outlier containing many of the cultural architectural traits found at Chaco Canyon. We found this one panel of petroglyphs here. It looks like it represents the mesas themselves. This is where we thought we would leave one of our pots. We leave them mostly to honor the ancestors, but we also leave them to honor ourselves and our path forward to make things better, not only in this world, but inside each one of ourselves. This is the second panel of petroglyphs, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's a little bit weathered. If uh, you have any idea what any of this stuff looks like or means, you know, feel free to comment.
this swirl here looks like it could be a solstice calendar or something. There's a little divot and it looks like there's a little shadow point that could point at certain things. All right now it happens to be on the fourth mark and we are here on April. So this could have something to do with some sort of calendar. We're going to come check at certain times of the year and see if it lines up. This swirl here was made with the relief. I've never seen a swirl which was made with the actual relief being the swirl. And it kind of looks like a dragon with some kind of ray or something coming out of its head. Looks like some little people dancing or something. But I don't want to try to decipher what it is. It just is really amazing that it looks this good after all these years. This obviously looks like map of uh, waterways or runoffs or something like that. Down away from the cliffs, there are many examples of plain, corrugated, and black painted whiteware. Pottery style varied from tribe to tribe, village to village, household to household, and potter to potter.
These shirts had unusual variations we wanted to focus on. The vastness of this slick rock ocean covers many, many miles. The people that once lived here survived and thrived for many generations. Some years hard, some years tough. Some people never saw the outside of their canyon. They lived peacefully in these canyons for their whole life. Say the population of these areas in New Mexico were the same 800 years ago as they are now population started diminishing even before the Spaniards arrived. I really like to renew the spirit of what used to be here by bringing back the pottery to the places that it once existed. The idea of this scenic gallery was just to show pieces and how they looked in their natural habitat. Foods grown and pottery produced at Casa Meadow may have been traded to other outliers in Tachaco Canyon. The Casa Meadow community consists of a Chaco Great House, a Great Kiva, parts of two prehistoric roads, and several small residential structures. Casa Meadow Pueblo itself contains 22 ground floor rooms and may have had six second story rooms along the west side. try to do better in the future and look for a few more ideas. Tell us what you think in the comments about some of our scenic gallery.